Valley dropped all the way down the, the hierarchy and I've just had the guy on the phone now. Um, he said, well, once we've done the papers with the police, they, we would need to email me a copy of the, of the paper and they are, they are good to go. So is that to the port officer that we have to email it? Yes, yes, it's good. Okay, uh, look, I don't know how we would have done this without your help and you uh, obviously uh, are going to have to uh, go and have a, a drink out with this High Commissioner and... <laughs> His new best friend. Your new best friend, I think. Just prior to leaving Tahiti, we were informed of a low that was forming off the coast of the Solomon Islands, between Solomon Islands and New Guinea. That was being watched and monitored as they thought that it may develop into a tropical depression and become a cyclone. So we departed with light winds and that was also to our advantage in the end because that gave us a slower passage at the beginning. As the uh, passage went, we were a few days out and this actually was developing into a uh, quite a, an interesting looking low that was going to move down towards Vanuatu. So the action uh, or the in advice we were given was to try and track as far north as we could as we came across towards the islands and that's what we did. We're paralleling our track now and we're sitting on uh, nine and a half knots and 20 knots of breeze. We're doing a oh, 10 knots now. Doing a broad reach up, just trying to get away from this squall. The wind shift was through about 60 degrees, so we've gone from a wind coming from the northeast, about 060, six zero, to coming from the true north now. This is probably some of the heaviest rain we've, we've had. In daylight, yeah. We usually yeah. get these squalls at night time. True, true. It flattened the sea out. This morning we've seen no wind and then a lovely breeze, haven't we? We certainly have, it's been a beautiful morning. Yeah. It's just the wind I think. And the water. Yeah, it was just the water around the hull I think. We're not used to... Um, We're doing 10 knots again. Hearing rain on the roof. I've just prepared lunch but uh, before we serve it just doing a little bit of manoeuvring around due to weather. So what's happening up here Gordon? Well we're currently passing through the Cook Islands chain of islands at 8 to Taki. We've just passed that. That's about let's see, 50 miles behind us now. We passed that last night. So up until now we've had really fine weather haven't we most days. Blue skies and um, pretty consistent. And the prediction is wind. that tomorrow we'll be out of this sort of weather and there will be sunshine and lighter winds again. So it's just a period we're passing through. This is all the wettest period of the year too for the Cook Islands area. Right. They get most of the rainfall in April. Okay. Where, uh, and we have had a bit of concern about Cyclone Harold. All of our weather watchers at home and um, authorities have been keeping us up to date but the latest with that yes it's moving down towards Vanuatu unfortunately it's going to devastate some of the islands there with winds up to 125 to 28 knots um, then it's going to travel down towards the southeast past the east coast of New Caledonia 
and over a period of days it dissipates <coughs> as it gets out back over the water again and it'll reduce intensity. And our track will take us well above, like well north. Well, the cyclone is predicted to travel to the south us, yes. in front of us and we'll travel over the top. Yes. We'll be well north. Okay, sounds like a good plan. And the wind has died here, look at this. Yeah, you can hear the rain on the roof and the boom banging. <laughs> Nearly time for lunch. Oh, I say, that's a mahi, mate. Big mahi, you lose. Really? Yeah, a big one. Get these guys down. Okay. Yeah. Hook me. Okay. Must be a big one. It looks like a mahi. It looked like a mahi when he came out. Yeah. It looked flat. Yeah. I'm just gonna wear him out. Yeah, good. Brownie. Yes. I hope so. That would be nice. As we progressed, we were on to our seventh or eighth day. We'd been fishing, we'd been running lure out the back trying to catch some fish. And on the eighth day or eighth of April, we caught this enormous mahi mahi, which was actually large enough to feed us, the three of us, for around 10 meals or 10, 10 days. It was a beautiful fish. It did give up a give. Um, a bit of a fight, didn't it? Yes, we had to uh, depower the boat, just slow down and try and get this, this fish in. It was over 1.2 metres long. Hang on, hang on. Right. Ready? Now. No, no. You so close and yet. You got him. Well done. Oh, Good teamwork. Job. Excellent. What a monster. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. Get that gaff out of the way, Luz, so it doesn't, if he starts thrashing. Oh my goodness. As the, uh, that was, we were sailing quite, in quite nice weather up to then, but the weather watch we had with our friends, we were getting advice at this the conditions were going to get worse ahead. They were getting us uh, updates with their satellite images they could see. And by that stage, we were to the, well, to the north of our normal track. But that day, that evening, the advice was to go north, to go north, and that's what we did. We actually turned a little, and the weather did deteriorate quite quickly. We ended up with squalls with winds over 40 knots, and we were heading north to northeast, actually, at this stage. So. The sky for a few days was very, very overcast. The wind was strong and the sea was big, although it was rolling, it wasn't steep. We ate our mahi-mahi, mashed potato, capsicum and lime. And then soon after 9pm, we made the decision to stow the sails and motor north. Um, we motored through 40 plus winds and very heavy seas. It was uh, pretty, pretty hairy, but by 3 a.m. we weren't making much headway. We decided to to um, hove to, stop burning all that precious diesel, and we sat there in utter peace for three hours. Got some sleep, and it was an interesting exercise. We've never had to do that before. So 6.30 a.m. we hoisted the sails again with a second reef and we're heading in the direction of Nui at about five to six knots. So the effects of Cyclone Harry, oh sorry, Harold, are certainly with us. 32 knots of wind. We're running with this storm. It's um, on the edge of Cyclone Harold. Hopefully we'll be clear of it soon. Whew. Sure is wild and woolly. How's that for impressive clouds? It's scary too. 
especially when you're trying to outrun it. We were fortunate that the cyclone did in fact follow the predicted um, the route and we were able to avoid it by going north. And the cyclone passed around 500, 600 nautical miles to the south. By the time we were in, in this zone, it was quite a way south, and heading away at quite a speed and dissipating at this stage. So we were fortunate in the sense that we missed the core of this, which it turned out to be one of the strongest cyclones in the Pacific region for 50 years and had done a lot of damage through Vanuatu and Fiji Islands, Tonga. So yeah, we were fortunate. Um, so then we, we actually went, started heading back to our normal track. We were tracking then towards New Caledonia, which was taking us through the islands of Tonga, below the main islands of Fiji. Uh, that, that we did in quite nice conditions, actually. We were sailing in some really quite nice winds and Especially around Tonga, we were getting speeds of over nine knots with calm seas just under the Jenica in the main. Just beautiful. What are you doing, Gordon? Oh, bloody shit. Oh, that's the wind. Oh, that's the wind. <laughs> we had a passenger, did we? Oh, this is what happens when birds land on the boat and catch a ride for the night. We end up with a awful mess in the morning. Yucky. Around Fiji we became quite aware of a, a developing low near the bottom of New Caledonia and as we, uh, we, with our track we couldn't actually get up around the reef areas of the islands, it was going to become a, an extra, uh, quite a long way of distance to travel to miss this developing weather so we decided to continue on our path. That uh, and as we watched this, we realised we could actually probably get the front before it moved up behind us, and that's what we did. We ended up with a, a low moving in behind. We sat in some extreme weather for the day or so. It was torrential rain, strong winds, but mainly from behind. So we were moving quite well. We had the sails reef and. We, as we were passing below the island of uh, Isle of Pines, that evening we thought we had outrun this system. So we, yeah, we had dinner. Uh, two of the crew, two of us went to bed, and I stayed on the helm. And that was when uh, the winds actually all of a sudden went up from the 30s up into the 40s. And by then I couldn't leave the helm. Louise and Phil were asleep and eventually uh, Lou came up to give me a break, realised what was going on, we woke Phil up and for the next three or four hours we were experiencing these very, very strong winds. The, the seas were very rough and confused but the boat was managing that all quite well and we did that until about midnight and eventually it all seemed to ease up and the, the system dropped down below us and we started to get out of these uh, extreme winds. That weather system was actually smaller, wasn't as um, wide as the cyclone, of course, but it was more intense for us. Uh, it was a far rougher ride than we had experienced when we caught the tail end of Cyclone Harold. After such a rough patch near New Caledonia, the next day the most beautiful rainbow appeared and we could see from end to end and it was as if we were sailing right through the middle of it. It was an arch, archway for us to continue our journey. It was just beautiful. And from there we moved into these ideal conditions, blue skies, light winds but lovely sailing conditions, the seas were nice and calm. So uh, this morning what we're doing is setting off an arrival report which has to go to the Australian Border Force within 96 hours of our arrival. Um, the other one is to the biosecurity or the Department of Agriculture. Uh, they want to know also when we were coming in. And a separate one to the South Yacht Club where we're, uh, they, they have a... Um, quarantine uh, Quarantine bird. dock where we go and then we're cleared by the uh, state water control. It's all very exciting. We're within how many days? 
possibly six days? Uh, yeah, four or five days, maybe five days. It's uh, just over 800 nautical miles now, or nearly nine, sorry, 900 nautical miles to run to Very exciting. Oh, can't wait. Four more days to go. The excitement's building. Three days to go. We're nearly there. Cheers. Two more days. Yeehaw! As you know, the quarantine regulations in Australia are very, very strict. So we've had to be very careful about uh, what we're going to be bringing back home with us. Uh, dairy, meats, and um, fruits and vegetables will all be quarantined and uh, over the last few days we've been managing to whittle things down. Our fridge is definitely looking very very empty. Uh, the yogurts of course, only a few of those left but they'll have to be uh, quarantined when we get there. We've got a little bit of dairy in the form of butter and cheese but I think they'll be consumed today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, so we're doing pretty well. Condiments, that's about it. And in the fruit and veggie department, gosh, what have we got? We've got um, ginger, garlic, onions. What is that? One orange, a couple of apples, and an onion. That's it. That's all we have. So we've managed to do quite a good job at uh, consuming everything. It was delicious and uh, <laughs> very nice. Oh, and the freezer. We've managed to whittle it down too. What have we got? We've got oh, some prosciutto. And some salmon. That's about all we've got left. So we've done very, very well. So tomorrow we will be in Australia late in the afternoon or evening but we'll be home can't wait our last full night of sailing and look at this what beautiful conditions we have say that we are excited about getting back to Australia after all this time covering all that ocean is an understatement. We are so excited. <laughs> well, our we final are. day. Uh, Yay! 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 <laughs> Wonderful. Nearly here. Can't see land yet, but not far away. Won't be long now. <laughs> Gee, you can tell we're close to land now. Phil just got reception on his phone and uh, had a lovely chat to Karen. I bet she was pleased. I know he was. <laughs> it's been a long time at sea and uh, we we're all looking forward to getting home. Cannot wait. Land ahoy! There it is. The east coast of Australia. We've been waiting for this. And you know, just a few minutes ago we had a pot of dolphins around the boat welcoming, welcoming us home again. It feels good. Here we are on the Stardust Lounge. And look, over there, those lumpy bits. That's Australia. So, here's to, here's to the voyage of a lifetime, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Phil. Well done. Phil. Well done, it all. crew. It's been amazing. really, really amazing. <laughs> it's hard to believe we've done what we've done. It is. Remarkable. We always thought that getting home to Australia after such an epic journey, 
there'd be so much excitement. We'd have people all around us coming to uh, celebrate with us, family and and uh, friends. But of course, firstly, we arrived in the dead of night, <laughs> uh, but also with the COVID-19 situation, it wasn't to be. No one could come and join us. No one could come and celebrate. And uh, yeah, it was very different to how we thought it would be. A little surreal. Mm. Interestingly, uh, the day before we arrived, one of our friends here, all excited about our trip and what we'd been up to, phoned Channel 7. Thankfully, Gordon and Louise Hope were able to refuel Hope. in Tahiti before embarking on a non-stop journey to the Gold Coast. It was starting to come to light that here we were, isolated on this boat, but the rest of the world were doing exactly the same thing. It was just bizarre. But they're not home quite yet. They'll have to quarantine in Queensland for two weeks before returning home to Sydney.